Hello all, welcome to horatrainings.com. In this Oracle database programming session, we'll discuss about PL SQL record type. Let us get into the agenda. After completing this session, we should be able to understand how do we create a PL SQL record type and also how do we declare a variable with percentile row type attribute. So here, like in the PL SQL, we have two kinds of data types. Like uh, we know that like uh, the basic data types, which are number, varchar. Apart from those things, we have a different kind of data types. We call it as composite data types. Nothing but, you know, like a, an easier way to understand composite data type is nothing but a variable which can hold multiple values. And these composite data type are further divided into two types. One is PL SQL record. Other one is called collection. So in the PL SQL record, it is nothing but a variable which can hold which can hold a record of a table. It is not that exact a record of a table, but when you say a record, it's a group of set of columns which can be of different types. That's nothing but a record. So in PLZ equal, like when you just see a record, when you when you see any row in the table, that's nothing but a record, right? Like a set of columns, a set of columns in a table is called a row or a record and similarly the pl sql when you say a pl sql record is nothing but a variable which can hold a multiple set of values similar to a table row that's called pl sql record coming to the collection so in the collection it's a set of elements of same data type nothing but like array of employees array of employee names array of percentages right it's like a collection which can which is holding data of all the same data types nothing but there is another thing called a collection of records nothing but like i have a i have a collection which is a which is which can which is holding a 10 employee records that is also a collection okay that's a basic difference between a record and a collection a record is nothing but a single record a collection is nothing but a collection of record i can say an easier way to understand now so let us get into the pl sql record what it is all about it must contain one or more components of any scalar or record or index by table, index by table data type called fields. So nothing but like uh, when you declare a PL SQL record, what should it contain? So the type, the PL SQL record type should can contain a simple scalar scalar data types, or it can also contain a record data type. Okay, and again, it is not the same as database table, and it is not same as your database record. You can treat a collection of collection of fields as a logical unit. And these are generally used when you want to fetch the data or pass the data to a PL SQL uh, package or a function. Okay. We can also declare these particular PL SQL record data types as in the declared section, or you can also create them as a data. You can also create them as an object, like using create type fill, create type command. So nothing but like you can declare them within the PL SQL component, or you can declare them externally, like using a create type so that those things can be used in any of your different particular uh, PL SQL components. Okay, next one. Let us see the syntax of it. So here, if you observe, like uh, the syntax is type, type is a keyword, followed by type underscore name is record. And you have can mention the field, list of fields and the data type. And then here, if you observe, like uh, once your data type is created, how can you declare a variable of that particular type? You just need to mention the identifier, nothing but the variable variable name, followed by the type name which you created. And that field declaration here, if you observe, it can be of anything, like it can be a scalar field or it can be a complex field, nothing but it can be also a row kind of field. Okay, and also you can assign them values. Now, let us see one of the example. So here, if you observe in the declare section we have done, declaration of a type type student as record it is having three variables name hall ticket number as well as status and we have declared a variable called candidate a candidate is a variable of data type student which can hold three values one is name hall ticket number and status it can hold only one record it cannot hold the data of multiple records that you have to understand here it can hold the data of only one particular employee or one particular student in this case okay later on we will see that how can you how can a variable can hold multiple records also we'll see it okay initially this is one of the simple sample which is holding the data of a single candidate and we also have another example on the employee database here if you observe we have a same same similar kind of example i have it i just have a variable called type emp type is a record which is holding two columns and i declared a variable v emp underscore rec which is of type emp type and in the begin in the begin what we have done is we have written a implicit cursor which is fetching the data and then we just simply display it. so let us 
work on this particular sample and later on we'll see a sample based on a package to have more understanding okay now in this example what we have done i just declared a variable of emp type is record let us say i'll include few more fields also okay we'll include few more fields emp name e name sal number okay and then and uh, here i'll also need to fetch them right sal and here we declared a variable v underscore emp rec is a variable of this data type emp type so this emp type is available only in this particular anonymous block it is not it will not it may not it will not be available to other plsql components because we are not creating it as a type we declared it as type, which is nothing but a temporary available only within this particular block okay v underscore emp underscore rec dot sal you have to mention your particular variable name dot I mean to say like your particular record variable name dot column name like when you are accessing the when you let us say i'll show you before executing this one let us try to understand from here assume that i got the data like this now this is my variable let us i declared a table alias called e and if i want to mention any column name what do i mention e dot emp number e dot e name e dot cell so now why did i mention e because this is a table alias which will have which is holding all the columns and you can see you have to space you can mention if at all if you want to specify column you just need to mention your table alias name dot column name similarly when you're having a record variable now this vm emp underscore record is holding a uh, three columns because that data we mentioned three columns and if you want to specify a particular column you have to mention into which particular column you want to store the value then only it will work okay now here also you can mention cell and execute okay now we just got the data like 100 king one and some particular this one let us say we'll try to assign a emp number here i just hard coded with the emp row num is equal to one right instead of this row num you can also change you can assign some emp number emp number is equal to 7839 now execute now we got the emp number 7839 king and 5000 okay so this is one of the very simple sample about how we can use the type attribute okay you can have any number of like uh, variables in that as of now we declared three variables right now let us see another one the percentile row type attribute so it is almost similar to that one but here now in the emp table let us say i have around seven columns instead of like uh, declaring seven columns and you know like mentioning each specific data type and a variable name i can use a row person percentile row attribute which is one of the very easiest one let us say you have a requirement to fetch all the columns of a particular emp now in this case what we have done we just fetched only three columns right i'll save it anonymous sample one sql so i'll just do create a logic okay i'll just copy the same logic here but we'll try to work with a percentile row type okay And a number sample. I think I would have saved. I saved somewhere. One minute. Type sample. Think I'll make. I'll, let me save this with three. Okay. Now, okay. So now, what I want to do is, I just want to see a row type of sample. I want to use a row type sample. So I don't want to declare all this one, all these things. Simply, what I'll do is. I'll just use the same variable, but here, instead of mentioning EMP underscore type, which is no more available, I'll just mention EMP percentile row type. Now, what is happening is this e this V underscore EMP record variable, which can hold, it can hold all the columns of EMP. It can hold all the columns of EMP, nothing but it can hold again. It can hold only one particular row. Now, let us say I have selected one row. This is a single row, right? Like uh, we have around four, five, six, seven, eight columns are there, okay? eight columns now in this one order what i'll do is i'll just mention star because i want to fetch all the columns and here i can simply mention like this v underscore emp underscore rick okay now let's see how simple it is okay can you see we got uh, the relevant columns which we printed let us see if at all if you want to print high date you can print the high date also and one more disadvantage of this particular row type is let us say your table is having 50 columns and you want to fetch only 10 columns 
if you use this kind of row type logic what will happen you are unnecessarily fetching 40 extra columns which are which are of no need that is the reason you have to use record type if at all if you want to fetch only few columns and best best thing is to fetch if at all if you want to fetch all the columns row type is the best one okay so these are the simple samples based on the record type now i want to show one particular package example which involves a single record fetch as well as multi record fetch okay now i'll just close these two things not to confuse anything so let us first see first see how to be, how we can create a type okay how we can create a type so let me open this one table type example so in this example in this particular one here if you observe what i have done is first of i am dropping the type okay now here what i am doing is i am creating a type create or replace type my type is nothing but as object if at all if you want to create a type which is which can be available to another particular components you have to mention it as object okay the record will not be available here but it is just exactly same but as per the syntax we have to follow this now what we have to do is create or replace type object i mentioned these columns and now what i want to do is let us say my requirement is not to fetch a single record i want to fetch multiple records also so the best thing is what i'll do is i'll declare another type another type which is which can hold multiple records first of all i declared a variable which declared a type which is which can hold only four columns now i will declare another another kind of type which is a table of nothing but table of these particular object nothing but in each particular row i will have these things nothing but what is a table contain table contain a set of records nothing but this particular type will contain this particular type okay you can consider this as a row and this you can consider this table a table of this particular above row so i have created these types and let me show you the package which i created spec and in this i have two processors so in one processor the first processor get emp data record i am passing the emp number and the output what i am getting i am getting the oxx or emp table type and similarly get emp data for department so in this one i want to fetch the second processor i want to fetch multiple set of records in the first processor line number 3 i want to get only one emp record but still i have declared a table type array instead of this you can also use a normal array a normal type but i just declared a table type array and in this one i want to fetch multiple records so obviously i require a table type array okay now coming to the package body so one more important thing is like the, this particular syntax this is for the nested table syntax okay this is for the nested table syntax but you will have a similar syntax for the you know like uh, v arrays or you know like uh, associative arrays okay but don't get into those things as of now you can just simply consider this particular syntax to work on this particular sample later on in other sessions we'll try to discuss about the different types of you know like uh, the composite data types okay now now coming to the package the first package in this particular package we are passing the emp number and here if you observe i declared a variable i declared a v underscore emp record variable which is of type which is of type this one okay emp record type emp record type this is a emp table record type this is the emp record type and then after that so we have to initialize this particular array then only it will work okay so this out variable i need to initialize and i have to extend it extend is nothing but you know like your your assigning a one record memory allocation for this one okay and here initially i'm assigning with empty values and for this emp record also i'm assigning the empty record okay v underscore emp record this is nothing but a constructor like uh, maybe if you're aware of java you need to assign you need to initialize the object nothing but like uh, when you when you deal with the uh, java you need to create an object right before before you assign any values you need to create an object how do you create an object you need to mention new followed by the class name similarly now v underscore emp record this is of data type you just need to mention the data type followed by you can just mention the initially you can just assign all null values so that an object will be created and then later on you can assign values so in this one what i am doing select select these set of columns into this particular set of you know like um, v underscore emp record called v underscore emp record dot appropriate column names and after that i am assigning so for the first for the first index of p underscore emp record i'm assigning the v underscore emp record now what will happen so this p underscore emp record for the first record you'll have the emp data right now let us see how do we invoke it first of all so as of now we just saw about how do we how we code it and let us see how do we invoke also that is very important thing let me show you that get emp data 
this for department, right? Okay, let me show you that. I think I renamed it with a different name. Okay, that's fine. I'll just copy this. No. Anyways, I think I missed that one. Let us create it then. Okay, now here, what are we trying to do is like, uh, I'll declare EMP number, V underscore EMP number is equal to, I'll declare with 7839 and EMP record, declare, declare a table type, okay? And after that, what is the package method we want to call it? We want to call this one, get EMP data rec, okay? We want to invoke, get EMP record. And then what is the variable we have to find? We have to pass, we need to pass two variables. One is EMP information and the other one is a employee record information, right? So we'll not have any loop here. One minute. Okay, now how do you access the data? You just need to mention v underscore emp rec. v underscore emp rec. Okay, it is a table type, right? It's table type. In the first index, as per the data, which as per the logic which you are designed, the first record will have the information, right? Just execute now. Okay, so, yep, we got some issue. Yeah, this is because of the table. Okay, can you see? We got the data like this. Similarly, if at all, if you want to get the remaining columns information, we have four columns, right? EMP number, E name, salary, and hide it. We can also try to see that. Now we got the other employee, I mean, other set of columns also. Now in this one logic here, if you observe what we have done, we are passing an employee number and we are getting the output as a record variable from the PL SQL. We are getting an output as a record variable from the PL SQL. In this scenario, we are getting only one record, but we want to, we'll try to check out the other sample, which will fetch you the multiple records also. Okay, let me show you that one also. So I'll go to my package as we discussed, here I'm passing the department number. We are getting a record variable, same record variable, but it will fetch out multiple records. Now just see the code of that. I have a for loop. I passed my implicit query here. I'm passing the department number. And here one more thing what I'm doing is I'm extending the array because I have to dynamically assign a row for this particular nested table concept array. So what I'm doing is every time, if at all, if you want to assign a row, you have to extend it, then increment the subscription and then assign the values like this, okay? E-name, so respectively. Now, now once the data, once your program is ready, then what you can do is now go to the anonymous block. See, why are we using anonymous block? Because this particular PL SQL, PL SQL programs which are having out, you cannot invoke them using EXAC. You have to use anonymous block only. But as a developer, we are invoking EXAC, we are using anonymous block to execute. But in real time, what will happen is, whatever the program which you have designed, the source system, maybe the target or source system, whichever system, you were put, let us say, your PL SQL program will be used by a Java program. So the Java team will invoke your program or let us say your program is used in the integration. What will happen is your program will be invoked by the integration team or a SOVA or ICS team and they'll, they will try to extract the data from your database using your, your PL SQL program. To validate our program, how do you do it? Let us say you have designed a program, how do you validate? In this scenario, anonymous block is the best choice I can say, right? That is why I'm, I'm using anonymous block to validate how it is working. Okay, this is kind of UT unit testing for your program when you're when you are invoking your PL SQL program. Okay, now I declared a department number, and then here I'm passing the department number EMP record, and here I need to validate, right? Let us say whether it is fetching how many EMP how many EMP records for a given department. How do you do it? I need to loop this one. I need to loop this EMP record array. So EMP rec dot count. Now it gives you the maximum number of like it gives the number of records available in your EMP array. And based on that, I need to loop it so that I can print all the information, right? So now I'll just execute here, okay? Now can you see? So this information, the two line, the first and second line messages from the package where I have written the DBMS output. And after that here, I've written this one, EMP row count is nine and it is printing the nine records information. So now here, if you observe in this particular program, what we have done, we are fetching multiple records, okay? We are fetching multiple records using a out record variable okay so this all this is how you know you can fetch multiple records using plsql okay yep thank you